baseball. That's the dumbest thing I've heard in my entire life. That's right, everybody. You found the baseball episode. You knew it was coming. Freedom is just a click away. Nobody would blame you. Last chance. Excuse me? Adlin hissed from the other end of the line. Oh no, I was excited about the baseball. Someone else just... said... something really dumb at the same time. You, uh... Baseball. I stammered at trying to pull my ass out of the fire. So you want me to what again now? I've decided to hold a goodwill baseball game among server customers and server employees. She explained with a malicious glee in her voice as she spoke. This sneak fuckery is aimed at me, I just know it. I thought to myself as she kept explaining. So, who's all involved in this goodwill debacle of yours? You'll see when you get there. I was just calling to let you know that you might want to pick up some equipment. Your uniform should be there by tonight. Click. Did I just hear what I think I heard? Rissa asked, apparently choking back a laugh. Don't laugh. Nothing good's gonna come from this, you mark my words. Why the hell am I here? I asked myself, double-checking the location as I stood in front of the crocodile monster's nightmarish tunnel. Ugh, this just keeps getting better. I complained, rolling my bike into the entrance. After a while of walking, I already passed the door leading to the creature's lair. No familiar light glimpsing at me from the bottom this time. I kept walking until I began to hear chatter. Voices in the distance echoing down the dark, damp concrete corridor. And before long, I could see a light. An opening of some kind. So I hurried cautiously to see what it was that I found. The hell? I gasped quietly as I stared through the entrance to... An underground baseball diamond. Ah, Jose! Welcome, my boy! An unmistakable voice called to me from the side. Uh, hi, Captain. What a... I think you had a server account. I know you're not an employee. Oh, yes. I've been trying to get one for a while now. Lots of convenient perks, you see. How have my... Mm, status has been a small point of contention, but... Adeline has agreed to allow me an honorary account if I stand in as a team <laughs> captain and win this little tournament. So, there's like team captains and you. We pick our teams and then have an elimination playoff, he finished for me. And who's the other captains? I asked nervously. Over there, he answered, pointing to an area near one of the dugouts. Immediately, I noticed a few familiar faces. Relic? Are you letting Adeline drag you into this? It's something to do, I suppose. Hey, mustache, are you gonna catch something for me or what? A shrill voice interrupted him as he tried to speak. What the fuck was that? I asked him, mildly alarmed. He just let out a long, deep sigh as he pointed my vision in the right direction. Hey, isn't that... Miss Abigail already at it, is she? Dr. Jekyll asked with a chuckle as he walked over to join me and Relic. Things is gonna get interesting if she's playing. He said with more an air of apprehension that time. Wait, why? I asked. But well... Bang! And I do mean bang! An earth-shattering, inner-ear, decimating crack split the air as a cloud of dust rushed away from the pitcher's mound. Shit! Son of a bitch! I I'm rusty! That doesn't count! Abigail screamed, stomping her foot in the dirt. How is that the same person from the Hollywood shop? I asked myself, alarmed by the shift in personality. Mmm, yeah, afraid our dear Lady Abigail gets a teensy bit overcompetitive. Jekyll explained as he unbuttoned his shirt to reveal a gruesome scar across his chest. See that? Chess. Two years ago, she did that with a game board. Jesus, how bad did you beat her? I didn't. I just captured a few pawns in a row. Took two hours for the ER surgeon to get the queen she threw at me out of my calf. He added pulling his pant leg up to show another scar. Now generally concerned for my life, I turned from Jekyll to watch her pitch this time. The captain was squatted down behind his home plate, his bare metal hand where the catch's mitt would normally be. A few seconds passed, then her arms came up followed by her left leg. The knee raised all the way, level with her head. Hey, Orlando Hernandez, I thought to myself as I recognized the form. Then she stepped into a pitch, hooking her elbow deep and low, and then... Crack! Another deafening boom. 
Except this time I could see the source of the dust cloud as it emanated directly under the path of the ball. She's a submarine. I almost gasped as the ring and I soon identified as Hook's metal arm sounded softly in the distance. What's that mean? Means she pitches sidearm and real low to the ground. Like really low. Makita low. I bet she's got a mount of dirt on her knuckles. I explained. Mildly surprised to get to be the one who explains things to them for a change. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna make a formal complaint with all the team captains. I told them, marching over to where they were all gathered. But I almost lost all of my gusto when one of the captains I hadn't seen yet stood up. The goddamn sewer croc thing. But somehow I managed to hold my punitive momentum together and carried on towards them. Hey, what the hell was that? I balked at the cluster of paranormal creatures. What do you mean? The paranormal creature roared as softly as possible as one more awful crack rang out across the diamond. I... Ch well, I, uh... D Let me tell you what I mean. I stuttered, almost throwing up in my mouth from the nerves. You see that crowd of server people huddled in the corner over there? Piss running down their legs? How the actual fuck are we supposed to play anything with you guys? The boy does have a fair point. Hook agreed as he joined us, rubbing his shoulder where metal met person. I think there may be an asymmetry. He added holding up a half a wooden bat, a near perfect half circle the size of a baseball acting as a mark for where the rest of the bat should have gone. After he said that, I reached into my pocket and snatched my phone out, going straight for a specific contact. Adeline. Look under the tarp. Click. Huh? Tarp? I asked myself as she hung up on me. She said look under the tarp. I told the captains as we all started looking around until we found what she was talking about. We took the cover off to find several boxes with each captain's names written on it in large black letters. Well, that's curious. Hook said as he wiggled the claws of his metallic fingers under the lid of the box bearing his name. Wait, Baron? Jeez, I really am starting to sound like the guy now. The one that has damn name on it. And pulled the top off. Huh, very curious. After that, we found a note explaining. Apparently, the boxes were full of these things that the captains with super strength had to wear on their arms and legs all rock glee-like. Each calibrated to bring them down to the strength of an average-ish person. We're going to play hell getting these on you-know-who. Dr. Jekyll was the first to point out glancing over his shoulder at Abigail, who was limbering up on the fence in front of one of the dugouts. Some of us might not make it back. Just now, you'll be remembered. Jekyll! You're scaring the poor boy! Hook Papa bed when he saw the anxious look on my face. So I took that as a cue to get to a safe distance away from them before they told her the news. Deciding to go try and explain the amendments to the situation to the rest of the server people. Okay guys, good news! We might survive this, as long as we take cover when- You want me to what?! We heard Abigail bellow from the mound. That happens! Go! Go! Go now! I told them, herding them back down to the entrance for a little while. So, we're just going to pick teens today. Hook said, walking through the passage, one of his sleeves missing and his left eye getting visibly blacker as he spoke. His usually well-kept hair was now ragged and dirty. Dust was covering half his clothes. Blood that had dripped from his nose speckled the rest. Are you okay, Captain? Oh, uh, yes, yes. Went more smoothly than we had estimated, actually. He told me as his other sleeve fell off and hit the ground with a soft puff of dust. Which reminds me, we have an audience as well. There will be a couple of delegates coming later to inspect the area and arrange for security, so do be on your best behavior, everyone. Once we all filed back into the diamond, I looked around for Abigail since I determined her to be the most imminent threat to my existence at the time. I found her clutched between the hands of the crocodile thing who had previously introduced himself as Sobek, holding her up off the ground, her arms pinned down at the sides as she fought to escape. So, what's the deal with the hyper-competitive feral sociopath over there? I asked the visibly disheveled Dr. Jekyll. I deliver to several vampires all the time and they ain't like her. They're stronger than a normal person, but... Hmm? Oh, right, right. We've been trying to get to the bottom of that one, actually. He answered, standing up and dusting what was left of his clothing off. I'll show you the sciencey stuff behind it later if you want to come by the manor. I... Hmm. 
But yet, perhaps not. He trailed off, thinking back to the incident. I'll stroll by your place instead if you like. But yes, the abridged version is that there's a corrupt or, well, safer to say an imposter version of that metal that's in the knife Hook gave you that makes them vampires. Wondrous stuff it'd be if it weren't so nasty. Anyway, normally the metal's what makes them strong, you see. But it tends to tear the muscles up pretty awful in process. You follow? Yeah, I, I think so. Right, so Abigail is abnormally old for a vampire. They don't die naturally. But a lot of them, they tend to burn out and find someone with the means to, you know. But she's been going for about 500 years or so. And it's my suspicion that she's gained some control of what's going on with the metal in her system. Normally, what makes a paranormal thing paranormal is an abnormal presence of three different and distinct rare particles. And even entities with high concentrations don't have the same amount as that orichalcum stuff does. Even the fake stuff is lousy with it, right? So she's even the smallest bit of control over what's inside her. Well, she's like a tiny little juggernaut. I whispered, looking at the beaten and battered line of captains surrounding her. Hey, I only count seven. Aren't there supposed to be... Ah, Count, finally! We've been waiting for you. What called to the person who just walked in behind me? We're just getting ready to pick teams. Oh, please God, no. I whined as I slowly turned to look and see the Count's evil, mischievous smirk. Yes, I would not miss such an event. I trust it will be... quite rewarding. He said, his manic eyes never leaving mine. Hell no! Captain! Ca cap Captain! He's gonna try to kill me, I know it! I can't do this! You gotta get me out! I begged running around behind him. And the first pick is for Team Abigail, and it's... I hear the bullhorn squawk in the distance. Jose, welcome to Team Abigail! Well, afraid there's nothing I can do for you now, boy. She'll sooner drag you down to hell with her than let you leave her team, he said regretfully. About an hour later, after all the names were drawn for the teams, we had been placed in groups according to who our captains were. I think that was the point where everyone on my team realized we were all in the very deepest of shit. Abigail had already begun to pace back and forth in front of us, all full metal jacket style, her hands folded behind her back. Then she started to speak. All right, listen close, minions. There's only one thing you really need to know about being on this team. Losing is not an option. Now, which one of you maggots have played baseball before? Before thinking, I started to raise my hand, but quickly snapped it back down by my side. Ah, shit, maybe she didn't see. You! She said, pointing to someone a few bodies away from me who had raised their hand. What experience do you have? Um, I played Little League as a kid. Ugh, okay, you. She said, looking over at me. God damn it, she did see. I groaned under my breath. I, uh, played in college, I admitted. What position? She had stopped mostly. You left-handed? She asked. I guess you'll have to do. She sighed when I shook my head before moving to the rest of the people with the raised hands. When she was done interrogating us, she left to meet the rest of the team captains for something. At which point, the team started to speak amongst themselves. Look, guys, I've been talking to somebody about this, and I think it's better we don't get on a bad side. We really need to come together and win this. I pleaded after I had all eyes on me. Lucky for us, she seems to be a really good pitcher, even without a super strength. So it's going to be pretty hard for the other team to get solid hits off her. If we build something around that, we might have a shot, I explained. Luckily, it looked like everyone agreed with me on the matter. So we started to figure out what we were going to do all the way up until Abigail came back over. Once we dispersed, she walked over to me and pulled me to the side. Hey, I know you, don't I? Yeah, you spent all that money at my store. Uh, yeah, that was me, I answered, thankful she didn't seem to remember slugging me in the gut or her reason for doing it. Good, good. Okay, so here's the deal, she told me. You seem like a person other people are drawn to. And you've got some experience, so if you make sure to win this, this is yours. She said, holding up her phone with a photo on the screen. Is that... Is that Excalibur from Monty Python and the Holy Grail? I shouted in shock. <laughs> Not just that. She answered with a grin, swiping to the next image. No, 
That's the entire ensemble worn by Grand Chapman as King Arthur? Why, yes it is. I keep it all hidden away in the back. It's yours to have if we win. She told me, talking the phone away. I'll be right back, I told her as they dashed back over to the rest of the team from the crossroads. Emergency! I shouted to everyone as we got there. Look guys, I know I was all optimistic a minute ago, but now... I don't care if you have to stab someone. We gotta win this thing. Miss Abigail, the hotel delegates are almost here. The captain shouted over from near the entrance as he put his phone away. It's always weird when I see him use modern technology. Well, you heard him, guys. Best behavior. Let's make Boss Lady proud, I told them all. Which one? Someone asked from the crowd, glancing nervously over at Abigail as she joined Hook. The one who pays our bills. Ah, you must be Ina and Travis. I heard Hook bark from behind me. Heh, <laughs> that's kind of funny. I said mostly to myself. Why's that? One of my teammates asked. Because that's my brother's name. I'm sorry, I don't mean to stare. Captain said before I could finish. But you look just... Well, you look almost exactly like... He trailed off, causing me to turn and see what was going on. The first thing I noticed was just two people in black and gold uniforms... Then that the woman was super pale with hair as white as Destiny's, but as thin as spider silk. And the guy standing next to her was... YOU MOTHERFUCKER! I shouted, swatting at Travis with one of the illumined bats as he took cover behind Hook. COME HERE, YOU RAT BASTARD! I CATCH YOU! I SWEAR TO GOD I'M GONNA KICK YOUR ROTTEN HEAD IN! WHAT THE HELL'S WRONG WITH YOU?! He shouted back, running in circles around the captain, me still chasing behind him. ME?! Everyone back home's been roid sick! And you've been over here at the Tipton with this broad? Do you have any idea how many calls I get from Ma every week? She's convinced you've been drugged and kidnapped and sold off to prostitution! You know how many times I've had to hear that since you've just fucking vanished? I say, Jose, is this really your best behavior? Hook asked in the middle of me taking another swing at Travis's head. I almost caught him with that one, but the pale chick he was with came out of nowhere and caught the bat like it was a pool noodle or something. Snatching out of my hand like she was an adult taking a toy away from a kid. You don't understand! I shouted at him. I almost had some asshole put a bullet in my head because this asshole borrowed money from a mob boss to gamble away. And why are all the women around here so goddamn strong? I added trying in vain to yank the bat out of her hands. Once the bat was back out of my hands, Travis pulled this little gold colored bar out of a pouch on his belt. A bar that just suddenly changed into a long golden sword which he pointed at my chest. Hey, I'm sorry about all that. I really am, but it's in the past. I'm a different guy now. The past? Different. It's only been a few months, you inverted rectum. I yelled, taking a step towards him. But when I did, I felt the tip of the blade press against my chest. Slow down, bro. S Don't make me do something we'll both regret. He started to say, but was interrupted by a loud crack and the sound of something smashing the concrete near the exit to pieces. That's my shirt stop you're threatening. Abigail's voice spoke as a dust cloud began to rise from a direction. Yeah, and we all like Jose. We don't even know you, pal. The familiar voice of one of my regular customers spoke from the group of team captains, followed by another staticky. Yeah. yeah, from Relic. By the time the dust had settled, we were completely surrounded by every one of the captains. The clawed hand of the Sobek monster guy rested on Travis's shoulder as it loomed over him from behind. A deep growl resonated from his throat. I'm your huckleberry, Abigail mocked with a grin as she walked up next to me, rolling another baseball through her fingers, but her eyes were focused on the pale woman instead, apparently thinking she was the one to watch out for. We stood there in a tense silence what felt like forever, waiting for someone to say or do something. And then... the woman took another step. Before I knew what was happening, there was another, much louder ear-splitting crack from beside me, followed by another plume of dust and a long metallic ringing. As the dust vanished, I could see the woman, who was only a few feet away from where me and Abigail were, and managed to get her own gold bar out in time, but hers had turned into a wide shield that held out in front of... Travis. But the ball never touched it. Instead, the ringing was coming from... the captain's metal arm which he held extended in front of the woman who had held herself completely exposed. The tattered remains of the skinless ball clutched in his clawed hand. I think it might be best if you were to leave now, he spoke to Travis and the woman. You might not be so fortunate to have me catch the next one. 
He added as a small stream of blood trickled from a thin crack in his arm. What do you think, Ina? Tavis asked. After which the woman looked around at each of the captains surrounding them and slowly shook her head. Really? Even with you here? He asked in response to the answer. I don't believe you. Let's kick their asses just a little before we leave. He added as his sword changed into a long metal staff. That's just my game. Abigail replied, cracking her knuckles with a mischievous look in her eyes. But before she could take another step, a look of horror flashed across her face as she dropped to her knees. I looked around as everyone else except the captain and Relic began to drop to the ground, clutching at their chest and throats. Then the sensation in me. It felt like I was burning alive from the inside out, like someone aimed a blowtorch down my esophagus at full blast. Bit will do. I heard the Count say as he casually strolled over to join the ruckus. I had planned to return home and continue watching the television program about the family with no shame. This is keeping me from doing so. He calmly scolded. His hands folded neatly in front of him as he stared down at the tortured bodies around him. Now rise, so that we might conclude the events of this evening and return to the comfort of our homes. And as soon as he said that, the pain vanished like it was never there. As everyone stood, they all kept their eyes fixed on the count. Sweat pouring down their faces as they gasped for air. Apparently all equally as shell-shocked from the experience of an actual living hell as it was. He could have done that to me any time he wanted. I thought to myself in awe, realizing I never really got away from him just because I was slick. He definitely let me go and was just trying to scare me. Then another thought crossed my mind as I looked back at Relic. Why didn't he go down? He was ready to throw down as much as the rest of us. Monk was trying to calm everyone down, but... Could that mean the Count didn't have enough juice to drop Relic with the rest of us? I kept my eyes on him for a second as his form flickered like it always did. The hell are you really? I wondered to myself, before turning back to the amazing talking prolapsed anus and his new paper white sidekick. I'll catch you later, I growled at Travis as he and the woman walked through the entrance back out into the tunnel. Perhaps it's better if Atlin didn't hear about this. Hook suggested as he helped dust the large reptile off. Lucy, Athel, I said to Destiny and Rissa as I walked through the door and sat on the table. What's going on? You know that guy from the bike shop? Destiny squeaked, jumping up from the couch where she was sitting next to Rissa. Well, look, she said, holding a piece of paper out. He gave her his number. He... Huh? Oh. They said, looking at large black numbers written in marker across the back of the receipt. When, uh, when did you get this? I asked. When we went to get my bike. I've been really nervous, so I asked Destiny what I should do now that I have a phone. Oh, hell. So he hasn't seen the... Patchwork, I thought to myself as I faked the smile and handed her the paper back. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. You seem nice. And I guess that explains the rose with romantic letter tape to the door, I said, handing it to Rissa. Thanks. She tripped as she took off up the stairs. What's with you? A guy hasn't seen that she's basically four-fifths of the person and another fifth of a person's own onto her. Oh, right. Well, I'm sure it'll be okay. Oh, no. What do we do now? All we can do. Hope that the best case happens. Be there for when the worst case happens. I guess you're right. So how'd your day go? Oh. Oh, you come here. I told her, taking her by the shoulders and leading her to the couch and shoving her down. Here. Sit. Sit. Get comfortable. You want something to drink? Here you go. Now get ready for this shit. Several days later, the plink of the bat echoed through the concrete stadium as the last game of the tournament was nearing its end. Somehow, my team had been able to come together under the whip of our evil overlord, Abigail, to reach the last game against none other than Hook's team after just barely managing to beat Tom's team. Yes, that Tom, by a couple of runs. Abigail snarled at the runner, standing nearest to me. Hey, you! She suddenly barked pointing at him when she noticed him start to inch his way off of first to second. You tried to steal second, I swear to God I'll burn down your house with it. Hey! Hey! I'll kill your kids! I am just so sorry about her. 
I told the now terrified Rona. She's not serious, is she? Yeah, I mean, I can't be sure, but she might. Look, between you and me, don't steal second. For the sake of you and your family, don't steal second. She's probably already planning to do something horrible to you just for getting a hit off on her. I told him, smirking a little when I saw his legs start to shake. Sorry, Kai, but I can't afford to lose. I'm gonna have that King Arthur set. It's just a game, dude, I said when he glanced back at me. Is it really worth it? Jose, quit flirting with the enemy! Abigail yelled, causing me to jump a little. Huck's batting, pay attention! Shit, I thought to myself when I heard that. Up to the point every time he batted, he did something I'd never seen before. The guy could aim the ball off the bat better than most people could throw it. Once he even curved the ball around Abigail, and right down the middle of two left fielders. I thought Abigail's head was going to catch fire with that one. It was like watching an old samurai duel or something. Both of them staring the other down, trying to figure out what their opponent's strategy was. And the tension was already high. We were somehow one point ahead. And this was their last batter. So Hook just has to bat the guy on first home into extra innings. And if he can hit them both home, then his team wins. But if we're able to start them both, we've won. I could tell what Abigail was thinking. Hook was going to hit whatever she pitched. But he was planning to put something high. He wants a home run. Either out of the park or something deep enough into the outer field near one of the weaker players so he can make a field homer. He doesn't want extra innings either. He wants to put his away. So Abigail's going to pitch high, make it harder for Hook to get underneath it. And with her being so short and a submarine, we just might have a shot if she can get it to rise just at the right spot. Then a leg came up. She was pitching. Hook hadn't missed a pitch yet, so it would come down to this throw, just like I thought. A low pitch breaking high at the last second. The captain got a piece of it, but it hit the ground. Hard, though. It rocketed off the dirt and into the air. I barely had time to think. Shit, it's still heading for the outfield. By the time the runner was long gone, a hook was barreling towards me on first. We had lost our chance to throw hook out on first, but we got lucky when one of our fielders were able to scoop up the ball and throw it to third before the runner could make it. We got him, but now hook had left first and was now steamrolling his way to second. Third got the ball to second in time, but hook doubled back to first. We just pickled. Captain Hook. Back and forth, we went for what felt like forever. We couldn't lock him down, the long-legged athletic bastard. So finally, I had an idea. It'd be a risk, but we were going to get tired of throwing before he ever started to even breathe hard from running. So once I had the ball, instead of throwing it to second, I waited. And waited. He passed second and was on his way to third. Passed third and was on his way to home. What the hell is wrong with you?! Abigail shrieked at me, jumping around on the mound and kicking dirt away like a rabid baboon. Then right before Hook got home, I unloaded. I heard the ball into home plate with everything I had, just as he started to get confident. But he noticed what I was doing and picked up his pace. I clenched my eyes before I heard the ball slap the leather in the catcher's mitt and the sound of the body sliding home. You're out!